And we're underway in Lincoln with Maurice Washington backing up seven yards deep in the end zone to take the knee for the touchback. And the freshman running back, we'll see him on the field later. But speaking of freshmen, Adrian Martinez making his way out. And Adrian Martinez not only is in the elite company that James mentioned with Kyler Murray, but he's in elite company in the conference. When you look at where Adrian Martinez is among conference quarterbacks, just second in the Big Ten to Dwayne Haskins. Not a bad way to start off your career as a true freshman. And where he excels is when the first play breaks down. When there's maybe not an open receiver, he's able to improvise extremely well and beat you with his arm and his feet. Spielman motioning out of the backfield. Divine Ozigbo on first down, coming off a big game. And Ozigbo to the 31, picks up six. Thomas Barber, Jacob Huff combining on the stop. And we've got an injured Gopher Time on play one. Gophers have lost their top two players on offense and their top two players on defense this year. It has been injuries to the worst possible positions for P.J. Flex squad. Yeah, and anytime you're battling with a young football team, you want to be able to have two of your playmakers there. You mentioned Rodney Smith, the tailback for the Gophers, and also Antoine Winfield Jr. These are guys that they're going to need and the both are out for the year. And it's Jacob Huff who ends up injured on this play. Jacob Huff's the guy who stepped up after the Winfield injury. Now this is good to see. Jacob Huff up and headed toward the sidelines. Let's take a look at today's Auto Owners Insurance Impact players, James. Yeah, well, look, when Nebraska has the football, they have two wide receivers that are all over the record books here. J.D. Spielman last year with a lot of freshman records. Stanley Morgan on career records. He's had 32 straight games with reception. Defensively, Blake Cashman and Carter Coughlin, both from the same high school in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, both should have an impact today. Martinez to the air for the first time. Finds Spielman in a good tackle before he gets the first down. Cody Durr, who they missed last week after he was ejected for targeting in the second quarter, makes a good tackle. It's a tough tackle in the open field. Third and short here. This is where Martinez, everything is available for him. Run, pass, the whole thing. That's Ozigbo in motion. Martinez will keep. He's got the first down. Thomas Barber with the ankle tackle at the 39. Huff back out there as well for Minnesota. Good to see. We were talking with Rob Smith, Minnesota's defensive coordinator, the other day. He said, Huff's going to be the barometer this week. <laughs> Martinez, low throw. Cade Warner with his first catch. And a pick up to the 43. We see Nebraska's trying to get a little pace right now. Some of these throws have been quick decisions for Martinez, trying to get him into a rhythm early on in this football game. Second and six. Martinez on the keep. Spielman on the receiving end with a first down. Nebraska going into that stiff breeze, and it is going to be a factor in this game. Passing game, kicking game, 22 miles an hour with gusts up to 30 miles an hour, and Nebraska will be working into it throughout this first quarter. Yeah, and if you're D coordinator Rob Smith, you're telling your guys, look, they're going to have to throw the ball quick and short. Martinez, sideline, Morgan with his first catch, and Stanley Morgan out of bounds at the go for 40-yard line. Now, earlier today, we were watching the kickers with the win, and it was not easy going for these kickers on either side. Look at the win taking that one. We'll keep an eye on that as the day goes on. That'll be a factor. Ozigbo on second down, got the edge, and Ozigbo into the clear. Divine Ozigbo with a divine touchdown run. Huskers have been starting fast. The third time in the last four games they've scored on the opening drive. And a 7-0 lead into the win here. Mohamed Ibrahim back deep for Minnesota. So much 
for the win. Let's go back to that touchdown. How did Devino Zigbo get such a clean edge, James? Yeah, well, Minnesota loses contain. Look at the wide receiver here come down and crack on this defender. And when he does that, Coney Dirt has to replace off the edge. If you don't replace and you let the running back get outside, now it's a foot race. And Jacob Huff just doesn't quite have enough speed to run down Divine Zigbo, which over the last two or three weeks, Kevin, has looked really explosive and decisive in his running style. He's really grown through this offense throughout this season. 170 yards for Ozigbo against Purdue, 159 last week in the overtime loss at Northwestern. First down and 10 for Minnesota at the 25. First carry for Ibrahim as Gifford makes the stop. Shy of the 30-yard line. Freshman quarterback for each team, Zach Anikstead, this freshman for Minnesota. Seventh Big Ten freshman with 1,100 yards passing in his first six games since 2000. Two of those seven are in this game. The other, Avery Martinez. Doesn't happen a lot, but Zach Anikstead has the walk-on starter. Dead to the air for the first time with lots of time to throw and almost intercepted by the Caprio Boodle. He was looking for Rashad Bateman and it'll bring up third down. Well, a really nice job there by Bateman turning into a defensive back here as Boodle had the interception. Bateman all over him with the pass break of himself. The Caprio Boodle leads the Big Ten with 10 pass breakups, making 11 now. Third nationally heading into this football game. Motion across from Tyler Johnson. On third down. Looking for Johnson, a juggling catch at the 39-yard line. Cam Taylor out there on the coverage, but when you need yardage and you're looking through the air, number six is the way you go. Yeah, Tyler Johnson runs this slant route so efficiently, able to put his foot in the ground. And Zach Anikstead, one of the few things that he does really well for a young true freshman quarterback is deliver that with accuracy. He did it really early in the football game last week against Ohio State. Nice throw here early. And now Seth Green, his first snaps of the Wildcat spot. The wind blows the ball off the line of scrimmage. Five rushing touchdowns out of the formation for Seth Green. He's also thrown for a touchdown. And Green on the keep. And Seth Green trying to pound his way forward to the 44. Akin Maladud and Dedrick Young combined on the stop as we take a look at today's Auto Owners Insurance Impact players on this side of the ball. Yeah, we've talked a lot about Mohamed Abraham already, but Tyler Johnson, we've seen him with the reception already. He is their best wide receiver, one of the best in the Big Ten. Mohamed Berry is the thermostat for this Nebraska defense. He sets the temperature and the energy in Luke Gifford, just a guy who tends to show up big for this Nebraska defense and their best pass rusher. Second down and five, Annex dead back at quarterback. Ibrahim the carry, runs into the arms of Gifford after a two-yard pickup to the 46-yard line, and it leaves a third and three. Well, there, whenever you do a zone read types concept, and listen, Minnesota does a lot of RPO type stuff. Not a big threat of Annex dead to run the football. Gifford doing a nice job crashing down, making the tackle. Ibrahim. He's got the first down. Look at him fight out to midfield to move the chains. Trey Neal and Mohamed Berry combined on the stop, but not until Mohamed Ibrahim nudges the ball into Husker territory and gets the first. That's a nice job by Minnesota's right half of their offensive line. Running right behind big freshman Daniel Falele, 6'9", 400 pounds, getting some push enough for the first down. They made the change at that right tackle spot at halftime of the Iowa game, and they were really pleased with Falele over on that right side, six foot nine, 400 pounds. And 
Armstead on first down with all day to throw. Looking to the sideline, an incomplete Rashad Bateman on the coverage. Daniel Falele, the freshman from Melbourne, Australia, went to IMG Academy for a couple of years, but only practiced there in 2016. Played football for the first time in 2017. So this is really just his second year actually on the field playing football in his third year total around the sport. And my favorite comment about Falele was from P.J. Fleck where he says, listen, even when he screws up, he's so big that it takes guys a while to get around him. 400 pounds, 6'9". My goodness. His offensive line coach, Brian Callen, said, I've been coaching since 1992. I've never had a player as strong as him. Second and 10 at the 49. Here's Ibrahim and right into the arms of Carlos Davis. A one-yard game, but nothing up the middle this time against Nebraska. And now James A. Long, the third down, trying to complete it against Eric Shenander's defense. This is a big situation for Nebraska's defense. You want to gain confidence as the game goes on, you have to get stops on third long. We're threatening to bring pressure on the young freshman quarterback of Minnesota. Gophers two for two on the drive on third down. Just a three-man rush. Johnson with the catch, and Tyler Johnson with another first down. That was a beautifully thrown ball by Anikstead. Nice touch to drop it into Johnson's arms. Nice touch and nice recognition by Zach Anikstead. They should see that they dropped eight. He had Tyler Johnson and put some touch and a little bit of air under it, knowing that your wide receiver is going to outrun a linebacker in Colin Miller. Nebraska's defense has gotten teams consistently this year into third and long. It's been getting those teams off the field that's really plagued Nebraska's defense. Three for three on third down on this drive for the Gophers. Panic dead with time wide open, and that'll be an easy six for Rashad Bateman. There is a flag down, though, back at the 35. Holding offense for 62. And that's the for the previous five. First down. So how about this? The holding negates this, and it's the first holding penalty called on a Nebraska conference opponent on a pass play in two years. When we heard, when we discovered this stat, and it's it's right here in the middle of your screen. When you read that stat in the in the meeting room yesterday, I, my jaw dropped. I could not believe that. That is a lot of football without a holding occurring, helping your defense out, rushing the passer. Trust me, as a linebacker, there's holding on every play. I'll tell you that right now. From my experience on the field, you can call holding every single play on these offensive linemen. It's remarkable that that's the first one in over two years for the Cornhuskers. And a big one as it takes a touchdown off the board. First and 20 now, the 10th play of the drive for the Gophers. And instead, dropped by Tyler Johnson. You could watch every Minnesota game all year and not see more than about two Tyler Johnson drops. Yeah, he has really sure hands and just has to look it in. He has the defender beat, and sometimes these wide receivers, they're thinking more about the run after a catch. Hits him right in the face mask. And as you said, when you watch film of Minnesota, he's a guy that continually shows up on those slant routes. Surprised that the Nebraska defender so far has have led him inside because I think that's where Zach Anikstead succeeds the most. Second down and 20. Ibrahim trying to get to the edge and is banged out by Barry. Ben Stilley also out there to help out on the stop and now third and a mile for Minnesota. Not a whole lot in the playbook right now if you're Kirk Shiraka that you like with a true freshman quarterback. A second and 20 is usually an opportunity to do screens, draws, try to get some back. When you don't get anything there, Kevin, third and 20, you have to be really careful. The positive for them is that they're in plus territory, so you have an opportunity to take a shot, try to get in the long field goal.
Third and 19, and extended in trouble, and he's sacked. Ben Stilley with his fourth sack of the year. for a play because his helmet came off. Fourth down. And this is a welcome sight. If you're Eric Trenander, this Nebraska Cornhuskers defense, nice up and under move, finishing on the quarterback. He just beats Connor Olsen. Getting pressure early and off. Or play football. Martinez on first down, right back to the end. Morgan with a nice catch and a good tackle by Cody Durr as we check in with Lisa Byington. Well, Kevin and James, to correct the Minnesota defense on that Ozebo touchdown uh, was Antoine Winfield Jr., who has traveled. Also, Rodney Smith, who is here as well. And both of those guys are injured. I talked to P.J. Fleck. I said, what is the value of traveling injured guys? He said, look, even though they're injured, they're two of our best players. And I'm trying to build a culture. So even though they can't play, they are so valuable here on the sideline. I mentioned Antoine Winfield coaching up his secondary mates on that Ozigbo touchdown. He was even pointing up to the large scoreboard and trying to point out the mistakes there. So very, very valuable, even though their presence is not on the field, guys. Yeah, and, you know, Ibrahim has been getting a lot of expert analysis with Rodney Smith, not only during games, but during practices as well. Great to have another set of eyes, especially eyes that have been in the position you're in. Well, Minnesota right here checking. Looks like out of a blitz to some coverage on third and three. Martinez, quick toss. Washington with a juggling catch, but he did not get the first down as we check in in Chicago. Mike Hall's got our first update of the day. Mike, thanks very much. That game delayed by weather early. And a slugfest late between those two rivals. Fourth and one, Minnesota's defense does its job. And now Isaac Armstrong to punt. Demetrius Douglas, tough field with the 36. And Douglas wrapped up across the 40-yard line. Colin Milskers were showing a blitz for a moment with Trey Neal creeping up towards the line. Second down for Anikstead. Ibrahim to carry, and Ibrahim brought down by Damian Daniels in the middle of the line. Next Saturday, BTN tailgate heads to Evanston as Dave, Jerry, Howard, Spice, and Michelle set the scene for a big West Division clash between the Wildcats and Badgers. BTN tailgate presented by Geico next Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern, right here on BTN. Big third down here, Kevin. Nebraska coming out with their pass rush type package that includes Caleb Tanner, the freshman, and Colin Miller, two linebackers more athletic, trying to create some confusion. Play clock at two, Ibrahim the carry, Miller with the tackle. Luke Gifford there to help out. And it's fourth down. And here comes Minnesota out to try a long field goal. This would be 54 yards, but remember, working with the wind at his back. Emmett Carpenter's long this year is 53. He hit that earlier in the year against Fresno State. Spielman had been back deep, but they ran him off the field. And the play clock is at zero, and they did not get the snap off. And this is going to cost Minnesota five. Play a game, offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. And that'll change what P.J. Fleck wants to do here instead of a field goal try. They're going to run the punt team on. This actually may benefit Minnesota, James, because the field goal was not good. Would have given 
the better field position to Nebraska had they been able to just keep that fourth down play going. Fair catch at the 10 by Spielman. Starting at their own 10 yard line. Martinez to the air. Fingertip grab by Morgan near the 15. Terrell Smith with the tackle. And you see early, James, the sideline routes for Nebraska. Not long passes going into the wind, but short, quick drops and short, quick passes. Yeah, and you see also them trying to get Stanley Morgan involved more. There's Martinez off play action. Another short toss to Spielman, and Spielman with a first down as Antonio Chenault makes his first tackle of the day. When you're going into that wind, you have to do these quick rhythm passes. You have to get creative on a lot of this play action stuff. Make the throws easy and short because that wind won't allow you to tack down the field. Huskers looking over to the sidelines as they will do to get the play. Martinez. Oh, what a fake. Well, Washington trying to get to the edge. He's got good speed. Washington with a cut and a first down. What did you say about Nebraska getting creative in the pass game and the run game? A little Statue of Liberty play, it looks like. And the fact that Maurice Washington is a guy to keep your eye on. You talk about the future being bright for the Cornhuskers. He's the future of that tailback position. Here's Ozigbo on first down. The Bono Zigbo breaking free. Can he beat Jacob Huff to the corner, to the end zone, his second touchdown? Nine yards a career long for Divine Ozigbo, who's gone over 100 yards on three carries. Longest run from scrimmage this year for Nebraska. And a 14 0 lead for the Huskers late in the first. Husker fans celebrating as we take a look at this message from ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire and the official hiring partner of the Big Ten Conference. Razzle dazzle with the fake pass and the behind the back handoff to Mo Washington. And then you go right up the gut and Divino Zigbo turn it on the Jets to get the Huskers into the end zone and a 14 nothing lead for Nebraska. Kickoff into the wind, a yard deep. Out comes Ibrahim. And Ibrahim will break one tackle and fights his way near the 20 yard line. Good work by Ibrahim breaking the tackle as Jeremiah Stovall finishes him off. But let's go back to that Divino Zigbo touchdown run. Yeah, we'll look up top. Coney Durr is the unblocked player. You're going to have a receiver come up and a tight end wall off. He's got to replace and make a tackle. When that happens, you're unblocked. You have to make the play. Ozigbo does a nice job getting north and south. And then again, his speed takes care of the rest, outrunning Jacob Huff. 8.1 yards per carry in the last three games for Ozigbo. I think that yards per carry is up today. You see the reaction on P.J. Fleck. He knows you cannot give up explosive plays when you're playing football games on the road in the Big Ten. And his offense now from the 19-yard line. At 409 yards rushing last year in the win over Nebraska. And extended the air wide open over the middle is Tyler Johnson. And Johnson's got a first down out near the 43 yard line. Pickup of 18 from to Tyler Johnson and Mohamed Berry trips him up. When you watch film of the Golden Gophers, that's all you see over and over is Anakstead hitting Johnson across the middle of the field. If you're the Cornhuskers, you have to take that away, make him beat you to the outside, a more difficult throw for the young quarterback. From the 43-yard line. Gophers get the big play, and now decent field position. And instead, trying to drop it on the sideline again, tipped away. Lamar Jackson able to bat it away from Rashad Bateman. It's a 
a nice job by Lamar Jackson on getting his head around and playing the football. That's the second time now they've tried the, the Gophers have tried to target Rashad Bateman. They're very high on the freshman wide receiver out of Georgia. 0 for 2 so far in this football game. Now a couple of touchdowns did Bateman against Iowa. Ibrahim. Caught from behind Tyron Ferguson. Able to wrap him up near the 46 yard line. And another third down and long coming up for Minnesota. Here comes that rush package again from Eric Chenander, the defensive coordinator of Nebraska. Look for them to be mugging the line of scrimmage. Trying to create some pass rush opportunities. Gophers do not have to snap it before the quarter ends, and they're not going to. That's the end of so the first quarter. So in extent on third and seven. Anikstead under pressure, hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. That pocket closing in on Zach Anikstead, and as he tried to get rid of it, Ben Stilley and Luke Gifford sandwiched him. Earlier in the football game, Eric Chenander decided to drop eight when he brought this package in. This time he gets a little rush, does it again. Look at that. Great pressure collapsing the pocket, making it difficult for Anikstead to step up in the pocket to make a clean throw. Nebraska defense gets its stop on third down. Now Spielman awaiting the punt. And the fair catch signal made at the 15-yard line. In between quarters, Nebraska honoring one of the greats from its time past, Aaron Taylor. Center slash guard for the Huskers was inducted to the College Football Hall of Fame over the course of this last season, getting honored between quarters, Scott Frost, his good friend and teammate on that 97 team that won the national championship, said to make sure we mentioned today that if we showed Aaron Taylor getting honored, that he says, and I quote, it's amazing that a short, fat guy like that could become that <laughs> successful on the football field. Yeah, he was telling us that all of his former teammates would have loved to hear that on air, so good job getting that in, Kev. On first down, Martinez, another quick toss to Spielman. Nice move in the open field, J.D. Spielman with a first down. Kind of getting used to seeing J.D. Spielman make moves in the open field, aren't we, James? Yeah, he is a guy that is so explosive and his ability to make people miss. You can see why they try to get him the ball quickly in space because he has the ability he just displayed right there. Martinez, what a start, nine for nine on the day. Washington trying to find some room and somehow found a little. I don't know how he got three out of that. He's got a lot of elusiveness to him, does Maurice Washington. He's got this ability Kind of just slither through defenders. Nice job by Blake Cashman, the Gophers' leading tackler, wrapping him up there, not letting him escape. Second and seven, low snap. Martinez in trouble, gonna run. Martinez not in trouble anymore. Got a block and a first down. Maurice Washington with a big block on the edge to give him a little extra room. And this is what P.J. Fleck, the head coach from Minnesota, said worried him the most about Adrian Martinez. The fact that the first play breaks down, he's looking downfield, eyes down, breaks a tackle, and he's able to use his legs to create something out of nothing. And then what about the block at the end of that play by Maurice Washington, looking out for his quarterback? 22 yards later, a Nebraska first down. Martinez with good protection over the middle, and Spielman hangs on through the hit for a first down. Jordan Howden and Jacob Huff both there, and Spielman with the catch. I thought Huff might have got there a little early. No perfect timing. And what about the toughness of J.D. Spielman to hold on to that football? That's five. catch number five. He now has 100 career receptions. First Husker to reach that milestone before his junior year. And now Carter Coughlin may have been trying to get an early start into the backfield.
Offside defense, number 45. Five yard penalty, remains first down. The news of the day so far might be the fact that Minnesota has three penalties and Nebraska has zero. Yeah, I mean, you talk about a team that are polar opposites and Nebraska getting over 10 penalties a game, second in all of FBS and Minnesota near the bottom. There's Maurice Washington, he wants to throw. Throwing left hand and he's got a man open and he cannot get it to Austin Allen. Huskers really open in the playbook today as we check in with Mike Hall in our BTN studios. Michigan starting to wear down perhaps Michigan State in that one. Everything going right right now for Nebraska at home is Stanley Morgan close to the first down just inches short of the 25 yard line. It'll be third and those inches for the first. Third and inches. You've got everything at your disposal here because if you don't get it you think a QB sneak will get it on a fourth and inches with how windy it is here today. I'm not sure either coach is extremely comfortable relying on the kickers in this ball game. We don't see a lot of QB sneaks with an offense that doesn't go under center very often. Martinez with the play clock at three. Trying to get to the edge, and that's a first down for Maurice Washington. Didn't need much, didn't get much, but he got enough. You can see a little bit of his speed that he possesses in Washington. Just being able to outrun the contain. As you said, they need a lot. Washington with a cut to the outside. Got a block downfield. Washington, it's first and goal, Nebraska. Mike Williams was that downfield blocker that opened it up for Washington. And again, you see the elusiveness, the ability to. He's kind of a strider, you know, he's got that long stride and getting around the corner, cutting it up. Jacob Huff saving a touchdown. Martinez off the fake. Martinez walks in for six. start for Nebraska 21 on the board early in the second quarter start. off to an awfully good start towards that first win as the kickoff goes through the end zone for a touchback and you've got to believe that if nothing else Scott wants it for his team obviously but to show the kids you've made progress you're in a position where now some of your hard work starts to pay off in the win column yeah when you're trying to build a certain culture and a way of doing things the best way to get everybody on board is with a win and so you look back to the start of the season that game being canceled against Akron negating them an opportunity to go out there week one and get one like that things have snowballed for the Cornhuskers and Scott Frost but what a start today up 21 nothing at home now you have to capitalize eyes on this keep this lead Three possessions, three punts so far for Minnesota. Anikstead will run the option. Trying to get to the edge, and a big hit leveled by Trey Neal on the freshman Bryce Williams. Well, nice job by Neal running the alley. Delivering the shot. Nice contact, using his shoulder, good technique, delivering the blow. Williams stays in the tail, back on second and five from the 30-yard line. And it's Williams again, and Williams planted by Mohamed Berry. Little life on the black shirt side now. 
tonight on BTN. Two of the best volleyball squads in the nation go toe to toe when Michaela Fecky in fifth rank Nebraska battles Stephanie Samani in number three Minnesota. Big Ten volleyball powered by American Ethanol tonight at 8 Eastern right here on BTN and the Fox Sports app. Huskers losing a tough one last night in Wisconsin, a five set loss for the Huskers in the nation's best volleyball conference. Third four for the Gophers. This football game for Minnesota. Three possessions, three punts for the Gophers. Trying to keep this one going down 21. Tyler Johnson right here. They love to go to him on third down. He's down there at the slot in the bottom of your screen. And instead, nobody open. Going to try to run. He's not going to get there. Colin Miller closing the door. And Nebraska's defense forces another punt. Minnesota started three for three on third down. This football game sets 0 for 4. Nice job by Eric Chenander mixing things up, confusing the young freshman quarterback. Spielman will let this one bounce, and it takes a great Minnesota roll. Dies at the 11-yard line, and the Huskers are pinned deep. 58-yard punt. Let's take a look at today's Wendy's stat of the game. This is the first 21-point lead for Nebraska in the first half of a Big Ten game since November 19, 2016, when they beat Maryland 28-7. Yes, almost two years since Nebraska's had this big a cushion in the first half of any conference game. I guarantee if you're Scott Frost, he's telling his guys to keep the foot on the gas pedal. Let's keep attacking this Minnesota defense. Don't let up. Levino Zigbo on first down, and Levino Zigbo going nowhere. Thomas Barber on the stop. Let's check in with Lisa Byington. Well, Stanley Morgan, the most vocal on the Nebraska sideline, jumping up and down on the bench, screaming, actually pointing at his teammates and saying, this is where we should be. Granted, the positivity helped by a three touchdown lead, but remember Scott Frost telling us the attitude and the culture, he felt like it flipped after the Purdue game. Yeah, he said it was a big, big change after that game and a drop by Stanley Morgan on the sidelines as we go back to Chicago with Mike Hall. Loads of stats for you today. <laughs> that's my call. When you need information, that's where you go. In fact, I'd just tweet him any questions you have. I mean, he's happy <laughs> to answer any of them, football or otherwise. On third down, good protection for Martinez, and the pass incomplete looking for Morgan. Crowd wanted a flag, but the 89,000 officials in the stands are not going to throw one, and neither are the guys on the field. Let's see. He's got his arm. Yeah, he tugs that shoulder pad. DeAndre Thomas getting away with one there. Usually those are the easiest ones to see, Kevin. When you see Jersey come off a shoulder pad, it's pretty easy. But refs are human, too. Somehow I doubt that will comfort no, it won't. the 89,000 <laughs> in red no, here. Isaac Armstrong to punt. Short punt for Armstrong. He's been awfully good since taking over a couple of weeks ago in that punting role, but Minnesota is going to have excellent field position at the, the half. Team. Get some momentum for your football team to keep yourself from leaving. And Anikstead on first down. All day to throw, nobody open. And now Anikstead will run, and Dedrick Young there to touch him up after a two-yard scramble. He had plenty of time there, but the impressive thing for me so far in this football game has been Nebraska's pass defense. They've had guys covered early on. They gave up some slants to Tyler Johnson, which he's done that against everybody this year. But since then, they've held up pretty well. Yeah. 
Second and eight. Quick screen incomplete. Wanted Seth Green on the screen, and it's third and eight. From the 42 and extent. Looking down the sideline, one on one coverage incomplete. Bateman against Jackson. Anikstead couldn't connect. And Nebraska's defense pitches a three and out from the 44 yard line. Yeah, Lamar Jackson doing a nice job getting press coverage. And again, not getting too handsy down the field. They've tried him twice with Rashad Bateman. They also tried to capture a Boodle earlier on in this football game. So far, Minnesota's having a tough time getting Rashad Bateman involved. And so far, Nebraska averaging 10.2 penalties per game with zero against them. High punch. Spielman waving for the fair catch and has it at the 10-yard line. Husker defense doing the job so far today, pitching the shutout position game, but Nebraska's been able to dig themselves out of hole after hole. Yeah, these quick throws have been the go-to for Troy Walters, offensive coordinator of Nebraska, getting the ball out of Adrian Martinez's hands fast. Martinez, lots of protection, slings it over the middle and incomplete. Spielman and Huff collide as we go to Chicago and collide with Mike Hall. Information from Mike Hall forthcoming. Martinez on a design quarterback keep slides forward near the 29 yard line. Seven yard pickup leaves a very manageable third down for Nebraska. Gary Moore on the tackle. And that 6'2, 220. Martinez is a tough guy to bring down with just an arm tackle. Able to get through there, fall forward for a six, seven yard gain. Impressive young man. Spielman motioning now on the bottom of your screen on third down. Martinez finds Spielman first down at the 40 yard line. And Martinez right now is in a rhythm. You can tell Kevin, he's just getting the ball out of his hands quick, making fast decisions. He's seeing the field well. He knows, seems to know what Minnesota is in defensively making quick, accurate throws. Six catches for Spielman, five catches for Morgan. First down at the 41-yard line for Nebraska. Oh, a fumble. That ball loose on the field, and Minnesota's got it. A missed exchange in the first mistake of the day for Nebraska as it's scooped up by Sam Renner. That's the jolt of energy that Minnesota needed in this football game. Nothing has been going right for the Gophers yet. A self-inflicted wound by Nebraska on a misread there. Seems between Washington and Martinez, whether he's going to give it or take it. If you're P.J. Fleck, you have to be fired up. Look for them to take a shot, take opportunity here. First down, looking for room up the middle is Williams, and he twists out to the 30-yard line. That's a seven-yard run on first down for the Gopher freshman. If you're Eric Fernander, you're telling your defense, listen, we have to have great sudden change defense here, gentlemen. Greg Williams used to call, watch this defense. Whenever you have a turnover, your offense gives the ball back. You have to go out there and try to force a three and out, recapture that momentum back from Minnesota. Deepest penetration into Nebraska territory for the Gophers at the 30-yard line. Williams again driven down by Tyron Ferguson, short of the first down. 
Tuesday, Troy Johnson and Jenny Dell show you their favorite spots to eat on the go around the Big Ten. Catch an all-new edition of Campus Eats Tuesday, 10 Eastern, right here on BTN. Jonathan Femi Cole in now at running back. Seth Green is going to take the snap of the Wildcat. Third and two. Green tripped up. He tripped over Jonathan Femi Cole, and Aaron Williams covers him up. It's fourth down. See, he tries to get the fake. He's trying to run right with the A gap. Just steps on the foot of Femi Cole. If you're PJ Fleck, you don't have a choice. You have to go for this here. And they'll stay with Green. Fourth and two. They're five for nine on fourth down this year. Going into the win. Green on the keep. Green's not going to get there. Aaron Williams with the tackle. And the black shirt tries again in Lincoln. And when Minnesota gets into this Wildcat with Seth Green at quarterback, they become extremely predictable. They try to run the exact same play. And Aaron Williams does a tremendous job off the edge of attacking it and securing that tackle. And until Kevin, Minnesota proves that they're willing to throw out of that formation. Teams are just going to load the box and have a certain pressure. Anytime we face the Wildcat, we always had a double corner blitz because until they prove they're going to throw out of it, make them throw it. Please throw the ball. That's what Nebraska loaded up for there. Jack Stoll in motion on first down. Divino Zigbo running behind Stoll. And he's down at the 31 yard line in the arms of Blake Cashman. It's been a long fall for Nebraska fans, but they finally got a reason to throw the bones. The black shirts shutting out Minnesota in this first half. And as a defensive football player on that sideline, you're telling your boys, let's keep this going. Let's keep this shutout alive. Playing with a lot of energy in front of the whole crowd. And Scott Frost calling timeout. Quick 30 seconds on the key. And Martinez driven down. Good work by Kamal Martin. He stayed right in front, one bite. That's a really nice job by Kamal Martin. That's a good fundamental tackle there. Sink your hips, deliver the blow. Because I'll tell you what, with Adrian Martinez one on one in the open field, from up here it looked like he had a whole lot of green turf to eat up. Kamal Martin says, not on me. Sets up a third down and a long yard. Martinez will keep. Oh, good move to get free. Martinez down the sideline. Adrian Martinez finally shoved out near the 10. Jordan Howden caught up with Adrian Martinez after the scamper to the 10-yard line. And it looked like Sam Renner here had an opportunity in the backfield, that step back by Adrian Martinez shows you how special he is to have a quarterback that can make somebody miss when someone's unaccounted for is truly special. Great effort by Jordan Howden chasing him down, saving a touchdown. And Adrian Martinez, how about those numbers in a first half that has gone all Nebraska. They fake the Statue of Liberty, Martinez with the keep and down to the nine. Winston de la Baudier wasn't going to be fooled the second time. They ran the Statue of Liberty play the first time, and now a fake fake. I tell you what, if de la Baudier doesn't get in there, maybe a little bit of fatigue too on Martinez. You just have the long run. Legs are a little tired, coach. But de la Baudier does a nice job playing with his hands, laying out for that tackle. So it looked like a lot of that defense for the Gophers was faked on that. Second and goal. 
Martinez slings it for Spielman in six. A flag is down. Martinez signaling touchdown. The flag's laying down at about the 28-yard line. It's going to be on Nebraska. But is it pre-touchdown or post-touchdown? Result of the play is a touchdown. After the play's over, on sportsman like conduct, offense, number 76. That 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. That is number 76's first on sportsman like conduct penalty. Brendan Hymas with the penalty, but the touchdown stands on the throw from Martinez to Spielman. And watch this fastball. Right there, split between Keandre Thomas and Jacob Huff. He had to deliver that with a lot of velocity. A nice, quick, accurate throw by Martinez. And Pickering tacks on the extra point. 28-0. Nebraska, another 30-second timeout in Lincoln. remaining in the second quarter and Nebraska getting ready to kick off back from its own 20 yard line after the touchdown by J.D. Spielman the first penalty of the day against the Huskers Brendan Hymas after the play so Nebraska still celebrating a 28 nothing lead but you know Scott Frost won't like the way that first penalty came up James no he won't and he's been a priest to his team those are the dumb penalties I'm talking about gentlemen after the whistle it's fine right now, it's 28 nothing, but it's hurt them this year so far. And the kickoff from the 10-yard line. Out to the 25, across the 30, and the Gophers with decent field position because of the penalty. Colin Miller, in on the tackle. So a 28 nothing lead, and James Laurinaitis, this has to be every Nebraska fan's dream. This is what they were hoping for with Scott Frost this year. Yeah, and Scott Frost has to be saying, I wish this happened in week one. I wish we had that opportunity against Akron or got the victory against Colorado at home. Instead, this has to feel good for these football players. He's going to be preaching to them. We have to finish. Last week, we had a lead against Northwestern. We didn't finish. 28 nothing's a little bit bigger lead. Now, where do you go if you're Minnesota? you got to figure out a way in this final 151 to get some points on the board. And instead, Looking deep over the middle, and the pass incomplete. So Anikstead trying for that big play to Rashad Bateman. DiCaprio Boodle with good coverage. That's been one thing that you could say consistently for Nebraska's defense today, James, is that the coverage has been there in the secondary. Yeah, it has. They've, they've been able to get a pass rush, which they've struggled to get all season long, which means that the corners have been hung out the dry a lot. Today, it hasn't been the case. They've been able to get some pressure on Anikstead, and the corners have held up nicely in man-to-man -man coverage. On second down, Anikstead with time. Oh, a leaping catch. What a catch by Demetrius Douglas. Deontay Williams was out there on the coverage, but another terrific grab by Minnesota and Demetrius Douglas with a BTN standout presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Gophers hustle into the line with a minute 30 to go and a flag flies. Donnell Green looked like he may have gone early, the left tackle. Ball start. Offense, Offense. 77, five-yard penalty, first down. Blaze Andrews gets that false start. Look at this catch one more time. I mean, what a job to go up and get the football. Full extension by Douglas. 
and then to secure it as he goes to the ground. Those are the throws that Zach Anikstead, he was a little high there, but those are the throws that, you, as you see on film of him, make that he's most comfortable with. Those throws across the middle on the slants, on the crossers. First and 15 pressure coming. Anikstead has to get rid of it. Good adjustment by Rashad Bateman to get the catch and get out of bounds. And pressure coming from Khalil Davis. Anikstead took a pop as he got rid of that one. And 15 yards later, it's a first down. Did a nice job recognizing the back shoulder there. Look at the hit he takes from Davis. Showing some toughness getting up after that one. This may have been a... They're not going to look at this, are they? There's a conversation and there are no flags on the field. Receiver went out of bounds after he caught the pass. Please reset the game clock to 115. Thank you. Clock issue. Go for fans immediately upset at the Nebraska clock operator taking time off the clock on the road. Pressure, Annex dead throws, dropped by Tyler Johnson. That's two today. Very rare to see Tyler Johnson drop one, let alone two. And again, Annex dead making an accurate throw on the slants. So if you're Nebraska's DVAX, you gotta stay inside. I'm sure Eric Chenander is yelling that from the sidelines. On second and 10, Huskers bringing pressure. Anikstead going deep, got a man open, it's Johnson, did he keep his foot in bounds as he made the catch? Yes, he did. All the way down to the Nebraska 13, working against Cam Taylor. A really nice throw by Zach Anikstead into the wind. And what a catch. Kev, that's good on Sunday. Well, that's fantastic. Look at that play. Ruling on the previous play, ball was caught inbound. That play is under further review. Well, they're going to look at this. Maybe they just want to see one more time what a great catch it was <laughs> by Tyler Johnson. The, the body control to be able to had the presence of mind to keep your feet on the ground. Well, you know what? This is a great excuse for this is a great excuse for us for the first time today to welcome in Mike Pereira from Los Angeles, who's watching this play. And Mike, as James mentioned. This catch looks like it would have been good on Sunday, let alone on Saturday. What'd you see? It would have, I mean, because he does drag both feet after getting control. It is a fantastic catch. And also, just let me say, in real time, a fantastic call, because these are so hard to make. We see in slow motion how close it is, and these guys were both on top of it. Um, great call, great catch. This will stay as a catch. Mike Pereira, thank you very much. Here's the ruling. From our referee Mike Cannon. After review, ruling on the field is confirmed. A completed pass. First down, Minnesota. You knew it was going to be because they showed the replay at Memorial Stadium, and the fans were grumbling before they saw it. They showed it, and people were, ooh, 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 that was nice. Wow, what a catch. And a nice throw by Zach Anderson to put the ball where only Tyler Johnson can adjust to it away from the defender. If you're Minnesota, you got a chance here in the red zone for the first time today. What a big drive this would be for Minnesota. Remember, they're going to get the football to start the second half. Anikstead, hit as he throws for the end zone, incomplete. Looking for Demetrius Douglas. Ball sailed on him a little bit. Aaron Williams out there in coverage. He did, and watch his eyes here. Immediately, he knows where he's going with the football. Looks right to Douglas, holds it for a while. Aaron Williams does a nice job breaking on the ball. But if the ball is a little more accurate, a little lower, Douglas can use his body to shield Williams. As a defender, how do you play that when a quarterback stares a guy down like that? Well, you trigger right now. As soon as you see his eyes go one direction, you know, hey, hey, guys, he hasn't come back to the other side of the field. So if you're a zone underneath dropper, it allows you to play faster. And extend looking right this time, one on one out there in the pass, incomplete. Looking for Bateman with Lamar Jackson on the coverage, and now third down. If 
you're Kirk Shiraka, you have to think touchdown here. You're down 28 nothing. Three isn't good enough to go on the halftime with. We need to get a spark, put six on the board. 0 oh, for their last six after the hot start on third down for the Gophers. This is a third and ten. And instead, open, touchdown, beat or Douglas. Demetrius Douglas gets the Gophers on the board. Zach Annex did knew where he wanted to go from the snap. Telegraphed it. It didn't matter. Douglas with the catch turns up field for the touchdown. Minnesota with a much needed. And now in for two goes Matt Morse. So the two point conversion makes it 28 to 8. Fake extra point. And Matt Morse runs it in for a pair. So Demetrius Douglas gets his first touchdown. And then Matt Morse, who was a quarterback at Apple Valley High School in Minnesota, runs it in for the two point conversion. And it's 28 8. Here's Maurice Washington. A little bobble. Maurice Washington able to get it across the 20 yard line before a host of Gophers drive him down. 22 yard line is where Nebraska will have it on first down. And on Tom Osborne Field. There's the longtime head coach of the Huskers, former athletic director as well. Tom Osborne's 1978 Husker team being honored today. So Coach Osborne in the building. And of course, a mentor for Scott Frost. Scott was telling us he comes in about twice a week, hangs out, checks in. So what do you do here if you're Nebraska with a couple of timeouts? You see if you can move it up the field? Yeah, you see if you can get something quick and easy, some momentum, and then you make a choice. So if you maybe get some quick throws, you sense that you can get some small chunks, you still have two timeouts to maybe take a shot, one effort, but you don't want to be too aggressive and give Minnesota the ball back. On second down and three, Huskers will run for the first down with Ozigbo, and he's got it. The clock stops while they move the chains. 34 seconds remaining in this first half. Martin and Silver combine on the stop. Now the clock begins to run again. Martinez pressure coming and he's sacked. Carter Coughlin with his eighth sack of the year, the Big Ten's leader. And a timeout is used in Nebraska. Fortunate that Coughlin didn't take the ball out of Martinez's hand as he sacked him. Carter Coughlin, as we head to break, nearly got the strip on that sack. They work from their 41-yard line with nine seconds remaining until halftime. And Devine Ozigbo with the run, breaks one tackle. Ozigbo inside the 40 and down to the 33-yard line. No timeouts, though, for the Huskers. With two seconds, they'll hustle up to the line. And Martinez trying to spike this one. You, you cannot spike it under three seconds. So they cannot stop the clock with a spike by rule. Officials threw the flag. How much of the crowd do you think understands that? Ball start, start. Offense. offense. The half is, the half over. is over. You cannot spike a ball under three seconds. You can only run a play with one or two seconds at the end of a half. You cannot spike it. But Nebraska fans, despite the last second scramble, pretty happy with how they go to the locker room. Minnesota, though.
and there goes the ball again, so we'll get a holder. Cam Taylor coming in to hold. 16 miles an hour gusting to 21, but it's right at the back of the Huskers. Light born ready. And the second half is underway. And this kick with the wind at its back into the end zone for the touchback. Tanner Morgan making his way out to start this second half. Both of these programs started the year with no one on the roster who had a career passing attempt. Terry Wilson of Kentucky, the only other program at FBS to go that route from a commit to Nebraska, Terry Wilson. And at the 25 yard line, first down, Gophers. And they'll run the option. It is Ibrahim on first down, and he tripped up by Gifford as he gets to the 27 yard line. Nice job by Gifford staying home, being disciplined. And I think you've seen that so far from the Cornhusker defense today. Everyone executing their job well, being where they're supposed to be. On second and eight, Morgan's first pass caught by Altman Bell, and Altman Bell off to the races. Chris Altman Bell. Showing terrific speed. And the Gophers fight right back into this as Trey Neal saves the touchdown, but it's first and goal, Minnesota. And the screen, a play call designed to get the ball out of the quarterback's hand quick. And Ottman Bell does the rest. Once he gets inside, Dedrick Young. Ibrahim. Stopped short of the goal line. Ayakin Mulatto at the one yard line. 69 yard screen to Chris Altman Bell. He's been the big play guy for the Gophers, averaging almost 16 yards a catch this year. On second down, Ibrahim leaping into the end zone for six. Welcome to the party, Tanner Morgan. And the Gophers are right back in this ball game. Talk about capturing momentum early in the second half. You could not have drawn up a better start. 11 seconds. You have to think if you're a Cornhusker on that field right now, we need to get this game back into our control. Let's get a few first downs, take some time off the clock. Let's stay aggressive. But the worst possible thing right here is it would be a three and out, giving Minnesota the ball back when they have all the momentum in this football game. Nebraska averaging 13 yards per carry in that first half. But Minnesota, Starting to feel a little bit better about their chances now with two touchdowns. One at the end of the first and one to start this second half and the kickoff sailing into the first row. What a boot. Good catch as well. Vintage Herbie sweatshirt. I'm sure providing the impetus and a little bit of spark there. <laughs> you know it's a big day when the kicker's fired up. Emmett Carpenter running off after that booming kickoff into the stands. And that was into the wind. We've seen kickoff after kickoff on that end go into the end zone. Maybe that wind is not quite the factor that it looks like. I'm not sure how it keeps doing it. First down for the Huskers. Ozigbo, the motion man, into the backfield. Martinez in trouble. Martinez looking to run, got a block. A little flip, flip over to Spielman and a flag down. Was it a forward pass? Was he across the line of scrimmage? He's trying to argue that it was a pitch, which you could certainly do across the line of scrimmage, as long as it's not forward. Watch it here. He's definitely yep. across the line of scrimmage and a forward pass. Yep. 
I'll tell you what, he made a good decision not to throw it up top to Stanley Morgan. Mike Ferrer is watching this from Los Angeles as well. This long huddle here is to sort out all of the stuff, right, Mike? Well, the two things you have to sort out, A, was he completely beyond the line of scrimmage, which he was, and then B, the direction of the pass where it left his hand to then it, where it first touched after that, and they ruled on the field by way of the flag that it was forward. Very close, but again, I'm not sure there's enough to overturn it, and there's the signal of the illegal forward pass call. I believe there's two, Mike, thanks very much. I believe there's two penalties on Nebraska on this play. Now you're deciding is it forward he left from the 26 and probably closer to the 27 when he caught it. So Mike Cannon our referee walking through the scenarios with P.J. Fleck. There are two fouls on the play both on the offense. Illegal block in the back, offense number 86. The penalties decline. Illegal forward pass, offense number two. That includes a loss of down. It'll be second down. And that's why that's accepted, because it includes the loss of down, and it moves it back to the 21-yard line. So it's second down and 14. Quick toss to Morgan. Morgan fighting across the 30 and gives Nebraska a shot on third down. It's 33. Nice play call there to get the ball to one of your playmakers and make it a third short. Much easier when you have a young quarterback attempting to pick up third and three versus a third and ten plus. We saw that quick short passing game a lot to start this game for Nebraska. Very effective then. Will they go back to it here on third down? Martinez on the key. Got away in the backfield. Looking for the edge. He's got the edge and the first down. Ke Keandre Thomas ran him out. Blake Cashman had a shot at him. Couldn't pull him down. Come on, Martin also. Well, this is what you can't coach right here when you get Adrian Martinez. Cashman, Coughlin, Martin. Makes a bunch of gopher solid tacklers miss for that first down. It was P.J. Fleck's major concern coming into the game, the legs of Adrian Martinez. Like I said, you can't coach that. That's something that his mommy and daddy gave him right there. Martinez, pressure coming. And Martinez just threw that one away. A lot of Badir and Coughlin were closing in on Adrian Martinez, second down. Smart decision to throw it away by Adrian Martinez with the pressure. He wanted to go there initially, didn't force it. Now they're talking, our officials, are they discussing whether or not it was intentional grounding? Stoll was the closest, and there's the flag. P.J. Fleck was lobbying for that. Intentional grounding. Offense, number two. No eligible receiver in the area. Penalty is a loss of down at the spot of the foul. Third down. If I'm not mistaken, I think Tom Brady got called for that in the Super Bowl, throwing it deep over the middle. Mike Pereira is with us again in Los Angeles. Mike, the uh, 89,000 officials wearing red in the stands did not like the call of intentional grounding at all. Well, 88,999 because I did. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, he's under pressure and he throws it into an area that is, there's no eligible receivers and he was in the pocket and good crew communication because the back judge had to come in and tell him, the referee, there was nobody there. Then the referee had to put in, factor in his uh, input, which was the quarterback under pressure. And then with the two guys, they came up with the call. All right, Mike, thanks very much. We've got a little delay here as the crew is going to communicate once more. A relaxing day at the ballpark is becoming anything but 
here in Lincoln. talking about third down third down they're confirming the down so it's third down and now a whistle and Scott Frost is upset on the sidelines all right Mike Pereira Scott Frost is saying that it's second down it's second down the officials have made it third down, and Scott Frost has finally gotten their attention. What do you think? It's second down. It was a first and <laughs> yes. down ten. It was a first and ten play. So, you know, you get this is where replay can get Correction. involved administratively to make sure they get it right. But it was first and ten. Loss of down penalty makes it second down and 17. So now P.J. Fleck wants an explanation as to why they changed it. Mike Cannon, the referee, says that's my bad. As he pointed to himself, and it's second down. Sooner or later, we'll get a snap here. I'll believe it when I see it. Adrian Martinez <laughs> wants everybody to settle down now. It's second down and 17. Quick toss, good catch. Oh, Devino Zigbo had to reach behind him to get that one at the 34, Keandre Thomas. And now, officially, it is third down. And a big third down here early in the second half. If you're in Nebraska, you want to continue to get a few first downs, not only take the clock down, but still some of that momentum back to your side of the ball. Big third and long. Martinez under pressure, Maurice Washington trying to turn the corner, and Maurice Washington's not going to get there. How about Blake Cashman running down the speedy freshman, and Nebraska's going to have to punt it away. And there was pressure from Carter Coughlin off the edge, forcing Martinez to use the check down. Look at Coughlin, the dip, gets rid of it, and Cashman, impressive speed running down the speedy Maurice Washington. That was back to take it for the Gophers. Isaac Armstrong will punt this away. Punt by Armstrong. Fair catch at the 21 yard line by Demetrius Douglas. Minnesota trying to creep closer with the football down 13.
Now it's time for today's postcards from Fansville, sponsored by Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Area surrounding Memorial Stadium at Haymarket Park, pregame festivities, and then the trek to the stadium. The Haymarket area, and then over here for football. 28-15. And Morgan on first down, looking for the tight end, and he finds Bryce with them. Just the third catch of the year for Witham out to the 34-yard line. Mohamed Berry on the tackle. 13-yard gain on the play. And James Laurinaitis, there is a sense of unease settling over Memorial Stadium right now. Yeah, you think you're on cruise control, up 28-0, and then 15 unanswered. A first down early on this drive. Nebraska needs some kind of game-changing play to give them some momentum back in this football game. Tanner Morgan starting the second half for Zach Anikstead, who's injured. Morgan setting up the screen and read perfectly by Tyron Ferguson. Rashad Bateman, nowhere to go. Nice job reading and reacted by Ferguson. Reading his keys, driving, making contact right as Bateman catches it. Ferguson was limited last week. He had missed a couple of games. Purdue, Wisconsin seems to be back to full here today. On second down, Morgan floats it sideline for Bateman, and it's incomplete with DiCaprio Boodle out there on the coverage. Third down. We've talked about momentum in the second half so far, Kevin. Right here, Nebraska needs to capture it back. If you're on that field, you're one of the defenders, you're a linebacker right now, you're screaming to your guys, know where the sticks are. It's third and 10. Let's get back. You have to force a punt here. Man rush. Morgan steps up. And Johnson stopped right at the first down marker by Cam Taylor. But they convert on third and 10 to Tyler Johnson. Tyler Johnson coming up big for his squad. He's always going to be who the quarterback looks to in those situations, any key situations. You're going to look for Tyler Johnson. Comes up with a big catch and then also a tough run to finish it. Get the first down. Sixth catch for Johnson, 99 yards. At 119 at Ohio State last week. Morgan, lots of room to run for Morgan, and Morgan's got another first down to the Nebraska 45. Trey Neal on the stop. And Tanner Morgan, the spark that lights the fuse. Well, you see the athleticism. Tanner Morgan, and very rarely will you see a quarterback look up a safety and lower his shoulder. A little bit risky with your starting quarterback on the shelf and Morgan, your only scholarship quarterback on the roster. Not a lot of options beyond Tanner Morgan at quarterback. I guess Seth Green becomes the next guy up. Anikstead not even on the sideline right now for the Gophers on first down and 10. Morgan looking to the sideline, and there's a flag. Looking for Johnson. Lamar Jackson out there on the coverage and pass interference against the Huskers. Well, there's a lot of hand fighting going on. Pass interference. Defense for 21. Penalty was marked with the spot of the foul. First down. So Lamar Jackson called for pass interference. And Minnesota continues its march at the Husker 37. There's Seth Green in now at quarterback of the Wildcat. Ibrahim the running back. Ibrahim will flip it back to Morgan, and Morgan going to throw, looking for Green down the right sideline, and Green's got it! Inside the 10, it's first and goal. Both teams pulling out the trick play from the back of the playbook today. 
Nice play design. Trying to hide the quarterback, Morgan. He gets it, and he throws it just in time. And Seth Green coming up with his first reception of the season, and a big one for the Golden Gophers. First and goal at the six. Morgan to Ibrahim. And Ibrahim inside the five before he's driven back. Trey Neal on the tackle. My goodness, has this game changed in a hurry, James? Kevin, this is where mental toughness comes into play. If you're in Nebraska, you have to keep your mind in this game. You cannot let your mind go to places like last week and say, here we go again. You have to rise up, try to force Minnesota to a field goal attempt here as Seth Green gets back in the Wildcat formation for the Gophers. On second and goal at the five. Green will keep. Got a block. Green, touchdown. Ibrahim with the block to spring Seth Green, and it's 21 unanswered for the Gophers. Celebrate the dance on the sidelines. Gophers right back in a game that looked like had slipped out of their grasp in that first half. Yeah, and I'm very impressed with the mental toughness of this Gopher football team. Down 28-0 on the road in the Big Ten. Rallied off 22 unanswered. Maurice Washington from the seven-yard line. Washington looking to get it going for Nebraska. And he's pulled down at the 27 by Justice Harris. Well, last week, Nebraska's been in this situation before. Let up big plays, penalties. Saw a 10-point lead late in that ball game. Slip away, losing in heartbreaking fashion. And if you're on that sideline right now, you're trying to tell yourself, not again. This is not happening again, guys. Not today. Not at home. They got to start making some plays to change that future. Martinez on first down. There's Stanley Morgan. And Morgan popped at the 32-yard line by Kamal Martin as we check in downstairs with Lisa Byington. Well, after that score, P.J. Fleck went to his offense and gathered them in nice and tight. And he said, guys, after all that we've been through in this game, we are one score away. Go up and look at that scoreboard. Have digested it all. We, now we have to finish it. We have to look at each other and believe it. Well, certainly plenty of reason to believe it. Kamal Martin still down on the field for the Gophers. We'll step aside.
Checking on Kamal Martin on the sideline. Julian Huff replacing him on the field. See the injury one more time. A little bit of friendly fire from Thomas Barber coming from the inside out pursuing the football. I have delivered those blows before and have been on the receiving end of friendly <laughs> fire before. On second and four, Washington turns it upfield. He's got a hole. Washington breaks the tackle and down to the Gopher 45. Cashman and Jacob Huff combined to bring down Maurice Washington. First down run of 22. That was a wide open hole in the middle of the Gopher defense. A nice acceleration. And a welcome sight for Cornhusker fans. Seeing Nebraska get an explosive play in this second half. Martinez wanted stole the in motion. He didn't realize it yet. And Washington with the spin. And Washington with a first down at the 35-yard line. Huskers were very fortunate that Stoll didn't get called for a false start. Yeah. You can see why coaches are so high on Maurice Washington, why the future is bright for this young man. Good patience there to wait for the pullers to get around the corner, put his foot in the ground, and get north and south. Seven carries, 79 yards for Washington. Martinez over the middle for Morgan. He's open, and it's a touchdown. Might be the most important touchdown of the season for Nebraska football. Yeah, you hear a giant exhale from the fans after that one. What a way to respond when all the momentum was with Minnesota to come out and get a touchdown in impressive fashion, very short, and now they're going to attempt the two-point conversion. Try to get it back to 14 full. Emptying it out as Washington goes in motion. Martinez will throw the fade, and Morgan with the catch. Flags on the field, but Morgan gets the deuce. Pass interference, defense number four. The result of the play, the try is good, that penalty is declined. See here, nice play design. Martinez pulls up, hits Stanley Morgan deep over the middle of the field. Offensive coordinator Troy Walter saying, you know, we need to get him involved more. Mission accomplished here today in Lincoln. Major Martinez leads a crucial touchdown drive, getting the ball to his stud wide receiver. And now the two-point try. Stanley Morgan with Terrell Smith all over him. Still able to pull in the two-point try. And now a 36-22 lead. The lead grows back to 14 on that four-play, 74-yard scoring drive. Now it's time for this Cornhusker defense to rise up. Prevent the Gophers from another consecutive touchdown drive. Douglas will stay in the end zone. And the touchback out to the 25 for the Gophers. Second half, medical reason for the departure of Zach Annex then. And Morgan on first down to the sideline, finds Tyler Johnson again, and Johnson over 100 yards receiving for the second week in a row and the fifth time this year. Watch his feet. Was he able to stay in on that sideline? Sure was. Nebraska dropping eight there. Morgan had all day to throw the football. And eventually, his guy Tyler Johnson got open for him.
from the Husker 49. Morgan on the keep again. Second time we've seen Tanner Morgan turn it upfield for good yardage on that option. Seven yard pickup on first down. Well, Tanner Morgan is a little better runner than Zach Anikstead, so you're seeing this come to fruition here. The last few drives utilizing this option, and he's kept the football and gotten big yardage for the Gophers. Nebraska that time was caught in a blitz as Young blitz the interior, and they got beat around the corner. Pulse in the tight end, the motion man on second down. Ibrahim the carry, and Ibrahim with a first down to the Nebraska 35 yard line. Gifford and Stilly to make the tackle for the Huskers, but the Gophers move it again. The Gophers, since that last drive in the first half, have had the Cornhuskers on their heels. Not so much attacking, but reacting to plays, it seems like. They gotta find a way to get some pressure and get some negative plays. Ibrahim turns it to the left side, and Ibrahim bounces off the tackle from Boodle and is down to the 26-yard line. Dedrick Young finally there to finish him off. A tough run by Ibrahim. He's going to take a shot. We can hear it up here. Just shrugs it off. Tries to get as much as he can. Tough running from the freshman tailback. Second down and three. Ibrahim, Barry, nowhere to go. Mohamed Barry's played a nice football game. You've heard his name called a lot in this stadium, making a lot of tackles. And a big third down. Gophers trying to hustle it up. On third down, Ibrahim. Driven back by Dedrick Young, short of the first down. Fourth down, a long one, James. And it looks like no questions for P.J. Fleck. They're going for it. Yeah, and it looks like with Seth Green coming in, it's this wildcat package for Minnesota. You saw their throw out of it, motioning Morgan back. See if Nebraska pins their ears back, ears back and pressures here. Fourth and one, Green will keep. Green's got the first down by plenty. To the 18 of Nebraska. A pickup of seven, blocked by Ibrahim to open up the lane for Green. Minnesota just lining up, saying, we're gonna run the football, here it comes, try to stop it. As Ibrahim lines up Aaron Williams in the hole and springs Green for the first down. Bryce Williams gets four to the 14. Luke Gifford with the tackle. I've been a part of defenses before, Kevin, where it feels like things are snowballing, and no matter what you call, nothing's working. It seems like Minnesota has you figured out. You have to continue to do your job, play your assignment, and don't try to do too much. That's where bad things can happen defensively. You try to do somebody else's job. Second and six, Morgan finds room and finds another go for first down. James, people are watching this on either side and saying, what has changed in this game? Why all of a sudden is Minnesota cutting through this Nebraska defense? They found something. I mean, they've done a good job adjusting offensively where nothing was working in the first half to the first two and a half, or yeah, first one and a half quarters, really. End of the first half, they're able to get something going. And since then, they've just been one step ahead of this Cornhusker defense. And now you have a first and goal from the six yard line. And you bring back the Wildcat. Eight straight runs for Minnesota on this drive. Green in at the Wildcat. Ibrahim the carry. Ibrahim tripped up around the ankles by Dedrick Young. 
He was down. They're marking him down at the six, and now you've got flags flying. Falele and Freedom Akinmaladun arguing over how many consonants and syllables were in each other's names, <laughs> and flags fly. Peyton Newell lost his helmet on the play. A couple other players lost their heads. This play had been ruled dead. It was down at the six yard line. Then you see Freedom getting up, yanking the leg of Falele, and then Trey Neal with a little shove at the end of it. There are two fouls on the play. After the play is over, that's sportsmanlike conduct, defense number 14. Unfortunately, conduct offense number 64. This falls offset. He second down. There's always a fine First line. Unfortunately, conduct penalty on those two players. There's always a fine line, Kevin, of trying to stick up for your teammates and not do something stupid. Whenever there's a scrub like that, you have to resist the temptation to go out there and stick up for your boys. There's a way to do that. You get in their face and talk a little trash without throwing any punches. The train wheel went up and gave a little shove to the 6'9", 400 pounder. Yeah. That seems like a poor <laughs> idea. <laughs> but somebody else. Second a goal at the five. Back with Green at quarterback in the Wildcat. Green going to throw for the end zone, and it's incomplete. And there's a flag thrown in the end zone. Now, would Colton Beebe be called for offensive pass interference? Yeah, it looked like he was blocking downfield. On Dedrick Young. Watch right here in the middle of your screen. Offensive pass interference, number 44. 15 yard penalty, repeat second down. Well, you have Seth Green in there who's thrown for 23 yards this year, but you mentioned it earlier, James. If you don't throw the football out of this Wildcat, it makes it pretty easy for your defense. Is that why you throw it there? Yeah, I mean, you're trying to keep the defense honest. Uh, Seth Green has history of being a quarterback. He's a guy that has done it before. That time, the play design just backfired on them, having your fullback blocking downfield. Second to goal at the 20. Can Minnesota recover from that penalty? Ibrahim. And Ibrahim not going to go anywhere to the 17. Dedrick Young with the tackle. And now third and goal. Luke Gifford thought he was being held on the play. If you're Tanner Morgan, you have to be smart here. Understand that it's going to be tough to get this ball in the end zone. And on the other side here, Nebraska, back up. <laughs> you're defending the goal line here. Don't try to be too aggressive yourselves and give up anything deep behind you. I'd like to see their linebackers back up. On third and goal. Morgan to the air, caught by Johnson, shy of the goal line at the three. Aaron Williams with the tackle, fourth and goal, and maybe a decision here for P.J. Fleck, a decision that will not be made until the start of the fourth quarter. Fifteen minutes to go in Lincoln. Scott Frost looking for win at number one. P.J. Fleck looking for a major comeback. Gophers and Huskers head to the fourth.
J. Fleck, aware of how important big plays are to television, says let's start the fourth quarter with a giant play. Fourth and goal, going for it from the three. Third time today, they've gone for it on fourth down. Morgan, the quarterback, this is the 13th play of this drive. Plenty of time, play clock at 10. Morgan. To the air, back corner of the end zone, incomplete. Looking for Chris Ottman Bell, DiCaprio Brutal turns the Gophers away. And all game long, DiCaprio Brutal has done a really nice job, Kevin, of playing these fade routes. Not panicking when the ball is in the air. It's crucial. Not the panic, tries to turn his head around. You surprised they went with the fade there on fourth and goal at the three? I'm surprised they threw it to Ottman Bell and not trusting your guy, Tyler Johnson, who today has proven over and over to be the guy to make the big catch for you. So now Nebraska starting deep in their own end at the three yard line. It's Ozigbo. Shakes a tackle in the backfield and gets positive yardage to the eight. Thomas. Here's carry number nine for Ozigbo. Fights out to the 11-yard line. Kamal Martin back out there to make the tackle. And it's third and short for Nebraska. Yeah, important third down here, too. Not just for momentum, as we've talked about, Kevin, but also for field position here. You want to be able to get a first down and make sure if you do have to end up punting on this drive, it's not from your own 12-yard line. Six of nine today on third down. Huskers 13th in the league. They only convert 34% of the time. Third and short, Martinez with the pitch. Ozimbo just tripped up. Ankle tackle by Jacob Huff, and that ankle tackle brings up fourth down. What a play by Huff. Great job of triggering and to get him down in the open field. Unbelievable to lay out. Looked like Ozigbo was going to have it. And just gets the shoelaces. They may be bringing in the chains here to take a look at this one. And they are. Gosh, even if it's a first down, that is a heck of a tackle. Boy, I thought from where he went down, this was a good half yard short. As all the Huskers jumped the chain. Look at that spot. He's very close. You're going to have the first down. The Husker offense had left the field. The punt team was out there. Scott Frost had called him to the sideline and thought it was time to punt. From up here, it looked like that was a favorable spot. Huskers will take it. First down. And Ozigbo with the carry for three as we go to Chicago in Mike Hall. Oh, Indiana given. The Nittany Lions, all they want. Saw Penn State last week in that 
battle at home and the loss to Michigan State. Martinez a step up throws it short Ozigbo with the grab first down Huskers. 14 yards to Ozigbo. He caught a rifle there from Martinez on that check down. Ozigbo does a nice job in the receiving game as well today. First down from the 30. Martinez again to the sideline. Nice work by Spielman. And J.D. Spielman close to the first down. Kamal Martin ended up grasping at air as he moved around Martin to get extra yardage. Well, that's one of the hardest tackles to make as a linebacker. When you're pursuing a fast guy, you know you can outrun you, and he puts in the foot in the ground and cuts back. I've been there before. That's tough sledding <laughs> when you're out there, and a guy who's 5'9", 185, who can make moves like that. Morgan motioning on second down. Martinez again. Good protection. Looking deep. And overshot Stanley Morgan. Not a bad time, though, on second and one to take a deep shot, James. No, and I, I love that play call because what it does for you, it's called a waste down. And it means that, look, if we can pick up, I believe, in my offense to go pick up a third and one if we don't get a big play here. So you take a chance on a second one. It just looked like a little confusion between Morgan and Martinez. Morgan's route cut more flat. Martinez expected him to go vertical. 521 yards, fourth time this year, topping 500 for the Huskers. Martinez on third and one. Design keep runs into the arms of Kamal Martin, but he moves the sticks to the 42 yard line. And what these few first downs do, not only field position, but it's taking some time off the clock for Nebraska. You have to find that balance of how do we stay aggressive, but also not be too fast. down at the 42. Play action. Sets up the screen for Ozigbo. Got a block. And Ozigbo down to the 49-yard line. Barber with the tackle. Gerald Foster out there with the block to give Ozigbo a little room. Oscars have done a good job on this drive, James, of yardage on first down to make second and third down much easier. Yeah, making life easy on Troy Walters. When you're in second and four, second and short, medium, you have more flexibility in your play calling. Martinez on second down. Martinez with a first down. Martinez with much more. And Martinez caught by Huff inside the 20 yard line. Well, Martinez displaying the ability to outrun everybody gets away from Asensio Tomewu and cuts it up. Jacob Huff having to make the ankle touchdown saving tackle. Gosh, if you're Jacob Huff, you've been frustrated with how many times you've had to run that middle of the field and try to chase down rushers all afternoon. And of late, it's been chasing number two, yep. Adrian Martinez. Swings it to Spielman. Morgan out blocking, but Spielman nowhere to go. J.D. Spielman got shoved at the end of the play. He turned around to confront the shover. It was his teammate, Stanley Morgan. That diffused it quickly. Stanley with a big smile on his face. Yeah, that was me. DeAndre Thomas closed that out with the tackle. Well, the two other guys that were there were Blake Cashman and Carter Coughlin, and they're all... Eden Prairie Eagles, all from the same high school. <laughs> so he would have been smiling either way. Second and eight. Martinez trying to get away. He cannot. That's Blake Cashman at his best right there. Terrific tackle by the senior Blake Cashman. Blake Cashman, a guy who's a former walk-on, played safety at high school, 
He's won the Gary Tinsley Award two years in a row. He stands for the spirit of the underdog with the Gophers. And when you turn on the tape, this kid is always around the football. It's cliche to say he's a football player, but listen, some guys, they might not have all the stars as a recruit. They just find a way to make plays. Third down and 10 at the 15. I walked in yesterday, you were watching film, and you said, watch 36, he's got a nose for the football. I really love watching him on film, Kevin. On third and 10, Washington trying to step to the outside, and Washington pulled down by Kamal Martin. Awkward looking tackle there that brought Maurice Washington down at the line of scrimmage. Fourth down of the field goal unit will come on for the Huskers. It's a nice job by him holding on to that football. It looked awkward because he, the tackler got his arm around the football. And that's how he got torqued down. Fortunate that ball didn't come out. 32 yard try for number 32, Barrett Pickering. This would match his long into the wind. Pickering's kick splits the uprights. Big field goal for the freshman kicker, and it's 39 22. Morgan to the air, carried around, intercepted. Dedrick Young with the pick off the tip. DiCaprio Boodle was the first to get a hand on it. It bounced twice and into the arms of Dedrick Young. Now the question's gonna be, where do they spot it? And they'll say touchback. Ruling on the field is we have an interception and a touchback. Timeout. Young's momentum carry him into the end zone. The deflection bounced off the helmet, it looked like, of Khalil Davis. And Dedrick Young with the pick to stop the Minnesota threat. I don't think anybody thought it would take till the middle of October for that to be the conversation. Nebraska taking as much time off the play clock as they can, trying to shorten this game. Martinez hit as he throws, but he's got Morgan wide open! Stanley Morgan got lost, and Stanley Morgan's got six! about this play call, Kevin. You let the clock bleed down. Look at the joy on Scott Frost and Stanley Morgan, his senior wide receiver. Both of them, I don't think, thought that it'd take this long to get their first W. Six twenty-two. The senior Stanton BB had the return on that short kickoff, was brought down by Winemaster, and an extracurriculars a plenty at the end of that. Personal foul, wow. face mask. Face mask. Kicking team number 41. 41. 15 yard penalty would be added on to the end of the run. First down. Deontay Williams. Just a little scrum at the end of it. The face mask was the flag. No penalty on any of the scrum here. But just the look, Gophers have it at the 44. Just looked like a good hard double team to me. <laughs> <laughs> Old coaches say, don't get frustrated because you're getting your butt handed to you. <laughs> 5.15 to go in the fourth. Morgan to the air. Open, first down, and more for Tyler Johnson. Luke Gifford finally caught him at the 24, 20 yard gain on the play. Gophers down big though with 5.05 to go. Minnesota's lost the league high eight straight road games. Got back close at this one, but the Huskers have been able to pull away late. 
Morgan again to the air. Morgan again to Tyler Johnson. And Johnson sets up the Gophers with a first and goal. Aaron Williams on the stop. Tenth catch of the day for Tyler Johnson. And if you're Nebraska, you have to key where Tyler Johnson is on every single snap. And you're just telling your players, don't let anything happen too fast. Keep everything in front of you. Morgan with a touchdown. Jake Paulson with a terrific block, and that lane opened wide for Tanner Morgan, who's got six quick. Well, here you'll see Muhammad Berry, number seven, gets cut. And Dedrick Young gets kicked out. That's a bad combination when you're playing the option. That backside linebacker is so critical to scraping over the top to be able to help make a tackle. He was chopped down there that time by the offensive lineman. Now Minnesota will go for two. Their first two-point conversion came on a fake. This one they'll set up for two. Play clock at one. Morgan under pressure. Morgan's going down. Dedrick Young got it. And there's a flag at the end of the play. More chippiness. Two flags fly. I believe this is all post-conversion try. Mohamed well, Barry got the initial penetration on that, and then After Dedrick the Young finished over, him off. On sportsman like conduct, offense number 73. A 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. That's Danell Green. Oh, Green. Oh. That's a little the first aggressive there. Like conduct at number 73 for Minnesota. You just can't do that. You have to keep your temper. I know he got his hand slapped by Akinmulagoon, but listen, you have to be able to take a deep breath in those situations. I know you're frustrated. Your QB just got sacked on a two point. But the second guy always gets caught, Kevin, always. And there he was the second guy. Of course, Minnesota going for two there to try to make it a two-score game. Yep. Of course, they would have needed two scores and two more two-point conversions. But all a moot point at this point with a 46-28 lead for Nebraska. That's great math by you, by the way. I've got a team of mathematicians that I travel with everywhere we go each week. <laughs> well, you're big on time. BTN. You are big time. I mean, abacuses are not easy to ship, but they do it. <laughs> Is that the plural of abacus? Abacuses? Abacai? I have no idea. I'm sure, Mike Hall will tell us later. All right, so you've got two kickers out there Carpenter and Mac. Both out there. It's Carpenter who kicks the onside, and it's Luke Gifford who snares the onside. So with that, let's check in on today's Duluth trading hardest working player. We set the game clock yeah, to 4 Yeah, it's Eric Lee with the effort on the touchdown saving tackle that led to the interception for the Cornhusker defense. If not for that, this ball game could have a whole different story. Eric Lee, hardest working player today. How about that? On that play. Didn't call his name a lot, but when his number was called, he made the play. This that offense has made a lot of plays today for Nebraska to the tune of 647 yards. That's the most they've ever had in a Big Ten game. Trying to add to it here with Maurice Washington, who tacks on two more. Last time they had that many against a conference opponent, you've got to go all the way back to the Big 12. November 10, 2007, the final days of the Bill Callahan era at Nebraska. 
win behind quarterback Joe Gans. They put up 702 yards <laughs> in a 73-31 win against Kansas State. You got to stop reading that all off to me. As a linebacker, that just, that just <laughs> makes me uncomfortable. I saw your shiver there when I said that. <laughs> It's been really impressive what they've been able to do, especially on the ground. I mean, you get 373 rush yards. Very impressive. Javon McQuitty and Stanley Morgan to the top of the screen. It's Ozigbo and nowhere to go. Again, Blake Cashman. We've called his name a lot. Anytime you watch a gopher game this year, you're going to hear the announcers call the name Blake Cashman because he just makes plays. Always around the football. Plays extremely hard. Got that underdog mentality, former walk-on. Gophers take their first timeout before the third and eight play. Dave Chuck and Stanley, they're standing by in our Chicago studios. All the scores and highlights around the Big Ten coming up on the State Farm post-game report. Lots of activity in the Big Ten today. That Michigan-Michigan State clash, Indiana-Penn State battling today. And of course, I'm sure they'll have plenty of conversation about what looks like it'll be the first win for Scott Frost as head coach of his alma mater. And if this score stays the way it is, Nebraska will stop a eight straight 30-point games of 30 points allowed in conference, most in the FBS for conference matchups. I'm sure that'd be a nice, nice streak to stop as well in this one. A lot of streaks today here. A lot of okay. streaks. The losing streak, the most important for Nebraska fans, I'm sure. Martinez going to the air, looking for Washington. And Washington unable to pull it in. And there's a flag. Terrell Smith on the coverage. True freshman versus true freshman. Pass interference. Defense, number four. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Ooh. Gosh, I don't know about that one. Not a lot there. It looked like his, he had his arm on him, but his eyes were back, and he's trying to play the football. And I don't really think it was underthrown that much to where Washington got interfered with. Now, if Washington had made an attempt to jump back to the ball and his body got in the way, I could see that. But look at Smith get his head around. They're both hand fighting, and he punches the ball out. I don't know, I don't know what else you want the young man to do. Maybe it's because I'm a linebacker. I don't know. <laughs> Probably. Jerron Woodyard and Brian Reimers, the receivers to the top of the screen for Nebraska. High snap, Martinez able to pull it down. Washington pounded down by Kamal Martin. We've talked a lot about Blake Cashman today. Kamal Martin's played a whale of a game. Yes, he has, and he's a good tackler. He's a big, big linebacker, 6'3", 235. And really, their linebacker core has played well the last couple of games. Now, you're going to look at the rush yards today and say, gosh, they didn't play well today. But that linebacker unit on that defense is their strength. Oscar's content to run that clock down. He may have hurt his wrist on that tackle. Martin's still trying to shake that one out. Washington again. Got the edge. Washington dancing, lunging, but short of the goal line. I mean, Thomas Barber laying out. To force Washington out of bounds. Look at that athleticism, though. One foot leap <laughs> that far. Impressive. Washington now over 100 yards rushing. That's three Huskers. Martinez, Ozebio, and Washington all with 100 yards or more on the ground. Here's Washington leading for the end zone. Touchdown, Nebraska. The cherry on top of Scott Frost. First Husker head coaching victory. Timeout for injured player. And it's Tanner Farmer, Oscar Center, who's down at the end of that play.
Cole Conrad started the first four games at the center position. Then Tanner Farmer moving over to take over at center to give Bo Wilson time at right guard as we watch the touchdown again by Maurice Washington. Really just nice push by the interior of that offensive line. And then Mo Washington to go up and in for the touchdown, capping off an impressive drive to put no doubt in this football game. Tanner Farmer will make his way to the sidelines. Part of an offensive line today I mentioned with three players over 100 yards rushing, James. Again, you got to go back in the record books a while at Nebraska, back to 2010 at Washington, when another Martinez, Taylor Martinez, <laughs> led the way. Roy Hellu and Rex Burkhead also over the 100-yard mark in that game. Barrett Pickering with the extra point. And it's 53-28, Nebraska. And reason to smile for the folks in red for the first time in 357 days. That's how long it's been between wins for Husker fans. And, and the biggest exhale for Scott Frost is the fact that you don't have to go out there in front of the media and continue to say, listen, this football team is a lot better than our record. Because a lot of times to people on our side of this thing says, well, that's just coach speak. But if you have paid attention to this Cornhusker football team, you could very easily see a few penalties here or there, a few plays here or there. And this season is a little different. Keep trusting in the process. Keep trusting in the culture building. There's going to be a lot of smiles and high fives in that locker room after the game. You know, we were talking with Scott Frost yesterday, and he said, we've had so many games this year with 500 yards, three of them at that time, now four. He said, the difference has been when you have that much yardage, we should be at the 50-point range. Yeah. Well, they've got that much yardage <laughs> today and more, and they're at the 50-point range. Yeah. 53-28. And since the Gophers pulled with a 28-22, about 25 unanswered points for Nebraska. Douglas, who had the big return. Fifty-three twenty-eight with one fifty-three to go. What a hit on that kick. You can hear it all the way up here, Kevin. I'll tell you what, the most impressive thing for Scott Frost is the fact that you lost total momentum in this football game. And yet your team had the mental toughness to come back, rattle off all those unanswered points, and get the victory. Not quite unanswered. The six points a moment ago from Minnesota broke the unanswered streak. Well, it's still seven unanswered points. A lot of unanswered today. <laughs> Johnson down at the 30-yard line. That'll be a first down, Aaron Williams on the tackle. Into traffic and incomplete. Williams out there again. Had a chance at the interception, could not pull that one down. Second and ten. Kevin, if you're Scott Frost, you're still going to have so much that you can correct from this film. But I tell you what, it's a lot easier to correct stuff after a victory <laughs> right. than after losses. Morgan flush, Gifford chasing. And Morgan had to get rid of that one. Nowhere to go. Good coverage. The pressure coming. And it's third and ten. Yeah, and a nice decision by Luke Gifford to lay off there. The temptation, I'm telling you, as a linebacker, when you finally have an opportunity, you've run so hard to get a hit on the quarterback. The temptation to lay into him, he holds up. Smart decision by the senior captain. Third down, Femi Cole with the carry. 
a yard short of the first at the 39. 115 to go, fourth and one for the Gophers. Yeah, Muhammad very slow to get up there. He's walking back to his linebacker position. Fourth down. This could do it. Femi Cole with the first down, and the Gophers stay alive with a flag in late. And that's going to be a flag against the Gophers. Holding offense in the 70. Ten-yard penalty with the fourth down. Barry has come out of the game. Colin Miller in. And Jacob Herbers will punt it away. A lot of people sticking around here for this historic first win for Scott Frost. Low snap. Spielman will call for the fair catch. And Nebraska will take a knee or two, and that'll end it. And a big hug there at the end between Blake Cashman and J.D. Spielman, both Eden Prairie natives, and Scott Frost finally gets that first win. Might be the happiest he's ever told the team to take a knee. <laughs> exactly. I can't imagine the joy of playing here, knowing what it means to this crowd, to this university. He talked about the culture flipped after the Purdue game. His team came in, the captains came in, said they've got an accountability list for missing classes and stuff like that. He said, the captains came in and said to him, look, if somebody makes this list three times, we want to move them out of the varsity locker room. We want them gone from this right now. We, there needs to be accountability. He said the culture flipped, and now Scott Frost is on the happy end of the postgame handshake. And for Frost, finally, that first win as Nebraska head coach. It comes 53-28 over the Minnesota Golden Gophers. And he gets the Gatorade bath for the water bath for win number one. Took a lot longer than he hoped, but it certainly feels good. And he's standing by with our Lisa Bikes. A little bit of a wet Scott Frost here. It, it took seven tries to get this done. What is your perspective on win number one? I'm just happy for the guys. They, they've been getting better every every week, every day. They've done everything we've asked them. This was a long time overdue. You talked about the culture flipping after that Purdue game. What about that culture flipping played a part in this game to pull it out? It's all part of the deal. It had to happen. Um, I don't think the kids were going to listen to us on some things until it cost them games. Once it did, the team started rejecting those types of things, and, and we're getting better. Uh, we're still not all the way there, but you can see the progress every week. I'm proud of them. Minnesota took the momentum. They scored 22 unanswered points. What changed for you to pull this out? We kept fighting. We found a way to get it done. Um, I told the offense, and didn't care what else happened, we're going to keep scoring and we're going to keep swinging. And uh, some guys stepped up big today. How good did that shower fit? I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What a good kind of cold for Scott Frost and the Huskers. They get the win now, one and six, one and four in the league play. The Gophers drop their fourth straight in conference play as we go back downstairs to Lisa Byington. Well, Ad Adrian Martinez, first, the significance of this win. You guys have waited seven games for this kind of feeling. What does this mean? Uh, it means a lot for us. Um, I think a few games didn't really go our way. Uh, I'm so happy for our guys, for Coach Frost. Um, we deserve this moment. <laughs> oh, man. He's the main man. Oh, man. <laughs> It means a lot you? to him too. Oh, nothing. They said how great you were. I was just. No, they didn't say that. They didn't say none of that. 
your run game was fantastic. You included uh, three players over 100 yards. What about that was effective for you guys here today? Um, I mean, we could do it all today. We were really feeling good offensively. We could run it, uh, throw it around. I mean, it makes it hard for a defense when they don't know what's coming at them. And Divine, uh, Maurice, I mean, it's, it's hard. They don't know if I'm running it, they're running it. Um, fortunate, you know, we, we can do special things on this offense. Win number one. Congrats. Thank you. And a big one.